still rolling. Let's get right into it. What did you discover about the very widely used method for calculating species extinction rates? And can you tell me a little bit about the species area relationship method, which is what we're talking about, and why its reverse application doesn't work? Before I do that, let me just say that we have a serious extinction crisis in the world. And so there's tremendous pressure on the community of conservation biologists to figure out how many species are being lost to help in conservation planning. Now there's one method that's been used more widely than any other, which is called the species area curve relationship. And basically this is the idea that since species don't live everywhere on the surface of the Earth, you can count up how many are in a particular area and then expand this area, adding a new species every time you encounter a new one. And the idea was that we could simply reverse that process of capturing species, reduce the area, and figure out how many species would be left. The problem with this method is very simple to explain. All we have to do to increase the count of species is find the first individual of a, of a, of a new species that we hadn't seen before. But in reverse, we have to eliminate all of the individuals of a species to call it extinct. And it's the difference between those two things, what's called the area of first encounter and the area of last encounter, that creates the problem. How serious is the global extinction crisis? The present extinction crisis is very serious. Uh, with no change in the rates of habitat loss, that is if they continue losing habitat at the present rate, and with expected climate change that is on the horizon, we could lose anywhere from 20 to 50 percent of all species in the next hundred years. But these numbers need to be re-examined if they were calculated by this incorrect method. So the answer is it's very serious, but we need to re-examine our numbers. How confident are you in your findings? Well, the findings were vetted by a uh, six-month process by Nature uh, with very good mathematicians looking at our mathematical proof. And so we're 100 percent confident that our answer is right. What happens as humans continue to destroy habitat around the world? Well, uh, the extinction debt problem is probably real, although we did not uh, address this directly. The extinction debt is the idea that species, as you lose habitat, species get more and more constricted in area and have reduced population size, and eventually uh, they're at very high risk to rapid extinction. So what we're trying to calculate now is how much area uh, gets lost results in how many species going extinct. That's a, a very big and current question in research. Is it true that you've, uh, you've loved being in nature since you were a child, or is this a new love? No, I've uh, ever since, my parents were both biologists, and so uh, they took me on camping trips, and I loved nature. I was a kid outdoors all the time, turning over rocks and catching butterflies, very non-macho things to do. <laughs> now, uh, tell me a little bit more, if you would, about, uh, is this the first uh, extinction cycle we're going into? You can tell me, about, or is this the fifth or sixth? Uh, tell me a little well, more. there have been uh, five documented mass extinctions on the surface of the Earth in the last um, half billion years. And uh, this is uh, probably the sixth, and it is unique in that, uh, unlike the others, which were caused by physical processes, uh, this one is being caused by a single species, us, uh, and loss of habitat and climate change due to human activities. And so, yes, it's uh, a really big extinction. At, at a glance, one would say that, well, if we should just lay off, we're fine, we shouldn't worry about it. Is that what we're saying here? Or is is, I know you've already Not said at that. all. Uh, I would say that um, the extinction crisis is real, and so if anything, the good news from this is that we've bought a small amount of time to um, save more species. But we shouldn't be complacent about it because we're losing species ever more rapidly, and uh, this will continue uh, if we pursue business as usual practices. I know this is hard news for some conservation groups, but the answer is that science is a self-correcting process and we need to, when we find an error, we need to correct it because we need the very best science we can possibly have to guide our conservation planning.